Do you Let's like glorious ah! one-shots? Wow. Do you like seeing the fear in your enemy's eyes? Most importantly, do you like... Welcome to Mech Warrior Online, the game where playing anything with LRMs makes you look like a complete potato. Today, Juju will be doing a build showcase of his signature mech, the Splat Dog. With its manly loadout of six SRM6s, you can brutally annihilate your enemies swiftly and painfully. We'll be going over the build, the choice of Omnipods, the reasoning behind them, and the general play style before going into some post-commentary gameplay. Do keep in mind that with the Steel Tree rework in, a, in about a month's time, I think it's probably going to be released around the end of March, that this build guide might not be entirely relevant in about a month's time, so I do apologize for that, especially with the quirk changes, uh, whether or not they'll be removing or reducing the quirks on the Mad Dog and the Steel Trees and whatnot. I will make an update video if the Steel Tree system isn't total garbage uh, on how to do the Mad Dog, but for now, this is the current Mad Dog build. Any updates I will release in a video, probably later on, when I have the time. Enjoy. Now, of course, before you build a Splat Dog, you will need a Mad Dog chassis. The two chassis I would mainly recommend would be the Mad Dog B and the Mad Dog A. I'll list their quirks over here, like so. Now, the Mad Dog B is the best uh, center torso you had because it has a, this best balance of agility quirks. Uh, you can see the XL decelerate, it has a good turn rate, and it also has the a quirk unique to the Mad Dog B, which is Torso Angle Yaw plus 15 degrees, which means that if I go over here and show it to you, the Mad Dog normally has, with Elites, a maximum Torso Yaw of 100 degrees. Now in the Mad Dog B, you have an additional Torso Yaw of 15, which means that the maximum Torso Yaw is 115 degrees, which is really good if you're trying to uh, fight against lights or if you just just general torso twisting is really good, but now the main problem with that would be the uh, over twisting, like you accidentally show your rear torso instead of just your side torso, which is something you just have to get used to, and it, it it's it's over time you get used to it. Uh, the Mad Dog A, you might be asking why I'm running the Mad Dog A over the Mad Dog B. Well, it's because I never bothered to buy the Mad Dog B, and I was already used to the Mad Dog A anyway, and I bought all the camo schemes and everything. I mean, come on, who doesn't like this? I hate this UI bug. Who doesn't like this Mad Dog paint scheme, hmm? If you guys are interested, it's uh, Ghost Bear with Black, Cobalt, Smoke Jaguar Grey. So yeah, the, the Mad Dog A is actually just inferior to the B, but because I had it and I was really used to it, I didn't really care for the benefits of the Mad Dog B, is the reason why I'm using the Mad Dog A. Now, as for the build, it's over here. You need the the prime components are the Mad Dog A left and right torso and the Mad Dog C left and right arm. Now, the left and right torso are obviously crucial to have because they're the only ones with the uh, three missile hard points, so you can do a total of six SM6s. And the Mad Dog C arms are pretty good because they come with a quirk that gives them an additional plus 20 armor, which means that if you put your heat sinks in your arms, the heat sink arms won't just fall off and you won't be cooking non stop. And over here, I have Basically, 6 SM6 with Artemis, 8 tons of ammo, and 17 double heat sinks. Now, this UI bug is bugging me. Give me a moment. There we go. Now, normally, for your average pilot, I'd recommend probably dropping that 1 ton of ammo and putting in an extra heat sink because you more than likely will not be able to run out of that SRM ammo, like all 8 tons. I've seen people who barely run out of 6. So. Yeah, you could drop it down all the way down to 6 tons of ammo and put an additional 2 heat sinks. It's up to you. Do your experimentation first. I recommend you start out with 7 tons of ammo and 18 double heat sinks total. If you find that that's not enough, you can just drop a heat sink, put another ton of ammo. If you find that you don't run out of it that much, you can drop another ton of ammo and put an additional heat sink. That's completely up to you. I personally run out of 8 tons of ammo fairly frequently, so that's why I have it at that amount. If you're wondering why I have the ammo placement as such, one, symmetry, yay, because I, I hate the look of asymmetric mechs, and two, is because having ammo in the leg means that if either one of your torsos is blown off, you still have, hopefully, at least two tons of ammo to spare, so that means you won't be completely neutered, which is an advantage over the Timberwolf, because the Timberwolf has to mount all of its ammo in the arm and torso, 
Therefore, when you get a torso blown up, you're probably not gonna have ammo anymore. Feels bad. As for modules, before you elite the mech, you might wanna go with uh, SM6 cooldown and range. Cooldown being more important, I feel, for that DPS. And range being an additional one if you don't have range yet. Uh, if you have to choose between which one to get first, I'd suggest cooldown for that extra fire rate. And before you have masters, the additional uh, master module slot over here, I would say get seismic over radar deprivation because seismic allows you to pick your your battles even better than without it. Because say you wanted to turn a corner, if you have seismic, you know roughly how many people are around that corner before you commit to it. If you have radar dub, you have to go in blind and have to rely on intel from your friend list, which is usually not that good. So get seismic first, and then after that, invest in radar deprivation. Is there anything else I really need to talk about? I don't really think so. Uh, top bit, if you guys wonder one, if you guys are wondering what the Warhorn I have, it's the Phoenix Blue, which is probably my favorite Warhorn in the game right now, besides the lunch shark horns. I think that's all we there is to it. Oh, weapon groups, right? Left arm, I mean left, right. That's all you need to do. This is the exact um orientation placement weapon grouping. I don't know how you phrase it that you have for the mad dog. Just left and right, and that's it. And that's all that needs to be talked about. Let's just get into gameplay footage. Transition! In the beginning of the match, Odin and I basically agreed that we'll wait outside tunnel entrance from our side to see what, what happens. And here's me basically complaining about the frame rate drops I get on Crimson because of the water reflections. Yeah, I have a fairly decent PC and I still get frame rate drops on this game. It's a bit disappointing. So, general rule of thumb as a brawler is that you want to stay near cover. You don't want to be out in the open without any cover. So your worst your worst enemies is literally Polar Highlands and Alpine Peaks because there is little to no covers on, uh, cover on those maps and you'll be basically left out in the open and have to rely on your team doing a push and you won't be able to like take advantage of your positioning with cover to make a play by yourself. So here, uh, we see, notice our team being aggressive, so I make a call on Void just to push tunnel because we have, like, you notice we have a Kodiak on the left, we have a Warhammer, we have a lot of people already near the tunnel and our Kodiak has the balls to push, so we initiate the push just like that with two Mad Dogs in the tunnel with a Kodiak and a Warhammer. Uh, enemy team basically uh, doesn't expect the tunnel push, like, the aggressive tunnel push. I, I make the call out to targets, primary targets, so we can down them really fast. Now your primary target says a mad dog is it really depends on the situation. Generally I like to target the max which gives you the most trouble. Basically the ones that are closest to you and has the biggest burst damage. I would normally I would just ignore lights per se. I would not give them my back, but I will not shoot them because your ammo is really valuable in the mad dog considering that you're completely ammo dependent, even if you have eight tons. You want to save those, uh, that ammo for bigger targets, so like, say a Cyclops, we can drop him really fast because SRMs just have really big burst damage and DPS. And they, they just work really well on big targets. I'm, uh, nothing really much that I'm doing here that's outstanding. We're just, I'm just making sure that I don't expose myself too much and making good use of cover. Now, you don't want to, even though you're using SRMs, you don't want to face hug. Okay, over here I alpha the Cicada because I just wanted to shoot at him once and then completely disregard him after that. Which is one of those situations where alpha, alpha striking is a decent idea. Now, what I'm doing is nothing really much, just focusing mechs which are weak, trying to get them down as soon as possible, calling out targets, focusing their weakest components. Like over here, I noticed the Huntsman legs were weak, so I just shot the legs, like so. It's really hard to get good footage to um, vault review to uh, to review in Mechcore because you only have one life per match. So if you die early, that's normally a sign that uh, yeah, you can't really do much after that. Like if, after you die, it's like oh hey, you died, <laughs> done. I can't really uh criticize much uh much of of anything else. We're just calling out the last remaining mech, trying to find out where he is, which is an oxide. I'll first try him because. In a light, any form of damage you do on a light is really good. And you generally want it to be all in one component, so on a light. Alpha striking is okay, I guess. I had the support of my team and I had heat to spare. So it wasn't much of an issue. And yeah, that's what you want to do in the mad dog is focus the mechs which are the biggest threat to you, which would be 
the ones within your range and have the highest burst damage. Lights are a secondary because they are generally just quite hard to hit, even with the SRM buff. Uh, mediums, it depends on the situation like I said, whichever one has the highest burst damage that's within your range is your primary target. You want to stay near cover, try not to expose yourself too much, keep yourself uh, covered from at least one angle which would be like, okay you stay near a building, you're covered from the left side, or you're covered from the back and so on. You don't want to be completely exposed unless you have to make a YOLO push because there is no cover in sight. Brawling mainly, the when, knowing when to push as a brawler, when to commit as a brawler comes from experience, a lot of experience. Because I've been playing this game for 5 years, I generally know when to commit and when not to commit, but sometimes I let, I let the bloodlust get the better of me. So all I can really recommend for you guys looking to play the Splat Dog, or any form of brawler in fact, is to just play it a lot, suffer through it in solo queue, I'm sorry, and uh, reflect on every death and every victory, what you did right, what you did wrong, and what you can do better. There's nothing really much I can say. Um, the Mad Dog is a very simple mech to play. It's only left click, right click. Make sure your positioning's fine. It's not really aiming intensive because it's SRMs. And yeah, that's about it. Now, if you have any more questions about the Mad Dog, uh, and you have... Actually, he here's an idea I just came up uh, right off the bat. Uh, if you have any questions about the Mad Dog, just leave a comment down below. If you like the video, don't forget to like. Or if you disliked it, dislike it. Give me feedback. Now, on the idea that I had, if you guys have any decent matches that you want me to review, I don't want one-way stomps. I either want a... Uh, one-way stomps either way are really boring. I don't care if it's a victory or a loss. If you guys want me to review footage, uh, try and make sure you get me a reasonably long match, maybe at least 5 minutes, and it's a close match around there. And if I have the time, I ho uh, actually right now I have a lot of time because I'm, in, I'm experiencing the holiday period, uh, I will try and do a review, uh, review on it. Now just so you guys know, I'm not a uh, very analytical person, but I can spot out the really obvious mistakes. And yeah, if I if I get enough submissions, uh, if I get a sub uh, decent submission, I would do it like almost straight away. We'll see how it goes. That's just an idea for now. Tell me what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As I said earlier, comment, rate, subscribe. And yeah, just give me feedback. I... this... Maybe the... I'll hold out any more build, um, build guides until the new skill tree is released because a lot of things can change and this build might not even be relevant. I hope to god it's still re relevant in the next one or two months. You have to see how it goes. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.